Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Andrew's Parish for today's Vigil Mass for the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please stand. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me. And to tell the world that God's kingdom is here To remove oppression and break down fear Yes, God's time is near God's time is near God's time is near God's time is near, time is near. Good afternoon Good afternoon all very welcome to Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. With your spirit. The Gospel today is about sending out the apostles. But he says some words that we need to take in because you know, when you speak about religion at times, what happens? Well, you can have a little bit of friction. So we'll speak about that in a few moments. But now let's ask the Lord again to remove all the fears and the worries from our minds. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to his people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess, the, our account the Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, off with you, visionary, Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. 
Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sick sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people, Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ and with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of God's grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all the things in Christ in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord 
Jesus Christ Enlighten the eyes of our hearts That we may know what is the hope That belongs to our call Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia The Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money, in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon again. Well, just to look at the apostles, the first priests, and the instructions that they were given. He sent them out, it says, two by two, instructed them, whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance, it said. The first reading reminds us The Lord can use anyone if they are willing. The prophet Amos says, I was no prophet, he said, nor have I belonged to any company of prophets. I was a shepherd. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, go and prophesy to my people in Israel. Now, growing up in Ireland, in the 70s. The troubles in Northern Ireland, which you might have heard about, were raging at that time. It was over politics, it was over religion and economics. So when we were growing up, we were always told, there's two things you should not speak about, especially in the pubs, right? That was the way of the life. At that time, growing up, we were told never speak about politics and religion, right? Now, there's an unusual story, actually, about a man in the Fall Rolls area of Belfast, and he was trying to get a packet of cigarettes late at night. So he went down the Fall Rolls area in Belfast late at night. And all of a sudden, there's a gun pointing to his back. And he says, are you Catholic or are you Protestant? The poor man didn't know what to say. He said to himself, if I say I'm Catholic and he's Protestant, he'll shoot me. If I say I'm Protestant and he's Catholic, he'll shoot me. So the man was trying to figure out what should he say. And he blurted out, I am Jewish. And the answer comes back, I must be the luckiest Arab in all of Ireland. Now, unfortunately, the apostles were sent out to talk about religion. That was their job. 
They were to talk about Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. So how could they reframe from conflict? Well, we'll take a look at the gospel here. You know today, you know today, when you mention religion in the family, in your workplace, or maybe even with your friends, what do they say? What happens a lot of the time? There they go again. They're just over the top. I'm okay without God, etc., etc. That's unfortunate the way it is. In Ireland, you see, you could not talk about politics and religion in the mainstream at the time of the troubles in Northern Ireland. So what were you going to talk about? We were always told to talk about the weather. Because when you talk about the weather, you can never lose. It used to go something like this. I think it's going to rain. Ah, you could be right. I think we'll get away with it. It will hardly rain. Ah, you could be right. It's very safe talking about the weather. You can't be right or you can't be wrong. But unfortunately, that's not what the apostles were told to do. That's not what I'm told to do as a priest. I wasn't ordained to tell you about the weather or about politics. I was ordained like the first priest, the apostles that were sent out to preach about Jesus Christ. Mark's gospel tells us, you will be hated by all because of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. Jesus gave the apostles very straightforward instructions today. If they don't listen to you, shake the dust from your feet and move on. Now, unfortunately, in the family, you can't just walk out the door if they don't listen to you when you speak about Jesus Christ. But sometimes, especially in the family, the way you'll get true to them about the faith is by your good example. You see, good example speaks volumes, sometimes louder than any words. Children in a family, you can believe that they watch what the parents do more than what the parents say. Good example never goes astray. In the family, the workplace, even with your friends today, they will test you about faith. They will test you and sometimes it will hurt you. Sometimes the greatest answer to these times, to these negative words is silence. Silence, again, can speak many words. You know, I spoke to a man recently, and I was trying to speak to him about God, but he wasn't having any of it. He'd obviously lost a lot of family members, and he was hurting. It wasn't the time. It just wasn't the time. And sometimes we have to just be patient and just sympathize with that person because you won't always get the opportunity to speak. The heart was closed at that time. Silence was the answer at that particular time. We wait for another opportunity. It's very important if they do not listen to you 
If not, let your peace come back to you. You see, it's only when you lose your peace how much you realize you've lost it. See, it's normal to be at peace. But when you lose peace, it's very difficult to regroup, to pray, to get focused again. The Lord Jesus didn't want this happening with the apostles. There's only so many hours in a day. Each one has only so much of an effort in him. So he was telling them, don't waste your time. Don't get caught up in an argument. Satan loves arguments so that whatever you're trying to do, the positive, speaking about the Lord Jesus, once you lose your peace, it's lost. The Lord knew that full well. He knows it with us, but we have to pray for that great gift of patience, to know when to speak and when to be silent. That's the key. Every household, these words I'm saying apply. Every workplace today, these words apply. And even with your friends. You see, peace is a tremendous gift. And I suppose the way you look at peace is to guard your peace is to guard the Holy Spirit in your heart. Amen? Let us now humbly profess our faith in one God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Saturday afternoon now, we humbly raise our hearts, our minds to our Heavenly Father as we bring the needs before him. For the Church in her mission of discipleship in building God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, our, Lord, prayer. hear our prayer. For the government leaders and civil servants, May God bless them with a purity of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> For all who face crippling fear and anxieties, may God bring them peace and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, Lord, prayer. hear our prayer. For our faith community, may God help us witness the fullness of his love to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, may God's peace be with them as they enter the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for today's Mass intention, Jose Matoso and Anna and Antonio Freitas, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We just pause now for a moment in the silence of your own hearts.
Heavenly Father, you know the needs in the hearts of each one present here in the church and also those listening and watching on the airwaves. We bring all our prayers before you through the intercession of the Blessed Mother as we say the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Let my life be grown in you and you in me. Pray brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church O Lord as she makes her prayer to you and grant that when consumed by those who believe they may bring ever greater wholeness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifested as the Church. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We now again come to the most sacred part of the Mass, the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with in him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, take away the sins of
This is Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. At this time, you can make a spiritual communion. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it. Sanctify it. Render it like unto your own. Amen.
Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us and have recourse to thee. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you to everyone who donated to the Catholic Charities Appeal. We are waiting the final totals but we believe we may have exceeded last year's total. Anyone wishing to be an altar server, lector, or Eucharistic ministers, greeter or usher, are asked to sign up. Sheets are available at all the entrances. St. Vincent de Paul is holding a raffle. Tickets will be sold after masses and also are available at Pennies for Heaven, $2 each or three for $5. Drawing will be held on Saturday, July 31st. See the bulletin for further details. August 15th is Catholic Youth Day. Bishop de Cunha has invited all youth, eighth grade and older, to a day on Martha's Vineyard. It is free and transportation is included. Please contact the rectory if you are interested. Beginning this past Thursday, July 8th, the diocese began 40-hour devotion. St. Andrew will, will be praying the second Tuesday of the month from 9 to 12 p.m. Sign-up sheets are available outside the chapel. 
There is plenty of information in the bulletin. Please remember to take one home and share all that is going on in our parish. Thank you. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to remind you, in September, God willing, we will bring back the miraculous medal novena that we had on Mondays at 7 o'clock in the evening. So we're hoping to bring that back in September at 7 p.m. on Mondays, the miraculous medal novena, the novena that's been said here for over 70 years. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for your participation. May the week be one of peace and health for all of you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Church neglect its mission.